All right, morning everyone. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through the decision making model um, that we try to do in class and hopefully uh, we don't get cut off and all that. So I'm going to start with this idea that again going back to our, our definition of economics, right? Economics is all about the, the study of the decisions uh, that are made uh, when it comes to scarce resources in terms of distribution, allocation, uh, what what we're going to produce and, and how we're going to get it to people and um, and all those all those decisions that go into those scarce resources so whether it's land or capital or labor um, or the entrepreneurship that exists in an economic system, the knowledge, um, the environment for enterprise, so the rules and things like that that go into uh, helping helping an economy run uh, smoothly. So I, I want to, again, I want to start with this because again, it's all about decisions. So if it's all about decisions, then we really need to take a look at uh, the decision making, right? So this is that underlying concept about uh, economic thinking. Um, every single one of us makes decisions daily, therefore, uh, around resources, and therefore we're all always uh, thinking in, in economic ways. Um, again, you do most of these, you make most of these decisions without even thinking about uh, it. You, you kind of decide what you're going to have for lunch without even thinking really about, about it or, or kind of um, weighing one option versus the other. There may be a little bit of thought that goes into it. I mean, take a, th take a, a second to think about a decision where you, uh, that you made where you had to kind of weigh costs, you know, buying one, um, you know, game system versus the other, buying one set of shoes versus the other. Um, that's a very simple, basic, but really important economic decision exercise that you, you made. And um, so you, you're familiar with it, okay? So I'm going to walk you through one, and then I'll, I'll kind of push you to consider uh, doing another one on your own. So again, the economic decision-making model um, or decision-making model is, is pretty straightforward. We start with defining the problem. We clarify goals and priorities. We list possible alternatives. We establish criteria. We weight those criteria on. Uh, we then evaluate each alternative using that criterion. And then we make the decision. And afterwards, we assess how effective the decision was. All right, so let's start with the first uh, step of this. And uh, in order to do that, we need to kind of have an uh, economic scenario. So consider this, right? Um, you know, 10 years ago or, or so, the city of Brampton had to decide what they were going to do with, uh, with the development of this area. Um, again, I, I wish I had a, a map of this area previous to its current form, but uh, previously this whole area was nothing but farm fields. Uh, this, where the school sits now was farm fields. Where the houses are next to us, the community, farm fields, right? So all this area was, was open, uh, vacant, uh, I say vacant, but was land that was going to be developed, again, agriculturally used before, and now it was going to be developed. So the city of Brampton had to decide what they were going to do with it. Therefore, they engage in economic decision making in order to, to do this, right? There is pl plenty of interest in, in, in it, uh, in this land as a resource. There's plenty of people who were um, hoping for one option or another. And so the city of Brampton had to really weigh all these and come up with the best economic decision. So they define the problem. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. What should we develop on the land? Here's a huge plot of land. Uh, what should we do with it? Again, organizations, uh, cities uh, engage in this activity all the time. Right? As soon as land becomes open or available for development, they are always, they then proceed through this uh, decision making. So that's the, de the defining the problem. Second step, goals and priorities. So again, this is pretty simplified. Uh, there's a lot more to this, but the city of Brampton, I would imagine, would have really thought through and, and said, okay, what do we want to do with this land? What, do, what are our goals and priorities with this land? I think one of the first things is this idea of maximizing its use. If you develop land, a land is a very valuable resource, very scarce and very valuable. You don't want to develop something that no one uses. So you want to maximize that use. You want it to be used regularly so that no one can ever come back and say, why the heck did you, you know, build this thing on the, on the piece of land that no one wants? And this, this happens regularly. Um, again, if you do a quick Google search, I'm sure you can find plenty of developments where the city and the citizens are outraged by the use of the land. And so these are one of, one of the priorities that a city always has is maximizing that use. 
Second thing, environmentally sustainable. Um, again, if you know this area, this is uh, there's a bit of a environmentally sensitive um, portion of this uh, that has marsh and, and creek lands. They want to make sure that it wasn't going to be destroyed uh, and is environmentally sustainable. And whatever they produce, develop on this land, again, they want it to be um, environmentally friendly and sustainable. Okay. Uh, third thing, long-term positive impact. Right. So again, this kind of connects to that uh, maximizing its use, but. They don't want to develop a portion of land and then 10 years from now have to go through this whole process again. They want long-term uh, positive impact so that they don't have to revisit this at all, you know, for a long period of time. I mean, hopefully um, ever, but again, they, most cities just want to be able to develop something and, and hope that, you know, 100 years pass before they have to make a decision about its use again. Okay. Minimal maintenance costs, again, cities have limited budgets. If they're going to develop something, they don't want something that constantly requires upkeep, you know, paying for people to maintain it, paying for resources to be used to maintain it. So again, something that doesn't going to isn't going to be a drain on uh, the taxpayers, the city uh, coffers, or the budget. Right. And that last one is just wow factor. Again, if you have a large portion of land that you're looking to develop, again, you have to. Um, or you don't have to, but most cities want to do something that uh, really impresses uh, the, you know, the citizens. And, and again, this is where politics ties into it. Um, but it's something that they can look, you know, refer to when their uh, vote coming up for city government, they say, Hey, I, I was a part of that development. Look how beautiful it is. Look how amazing it is. And people can go, Oh yeah, I like this person and I'm going to vote for them again because they create things that people love and it's impressive and it has it's world renowned, let's say, or things like that. Okay. Third step, list the alternatives. So what could you possibly do? Again, uh, cities, when it comes to land, have a few different options, but four main ones that, that they're always considering. Um, so this is that educational, institutional, um, natural kind of idea, park, you know, building a park and school, allowing development of retail, right? So stores uh, that that people of the community can, can go shop at. Housing, right? Again, every city needs housing for its citizens. And lastly, corporate development. So this is kind of office space. Um, I would imagine this is kind of the four options that they thought of for this use of the land. Industrial doesn't really work in this case because of the environmental um, area just south. So then it comes to criteria. If we're going to again, choose one of these alternatives, we need to be able to compare one to the other. And so this, this is the criteria piece. So comparing a park and school to corporate, to retail, to housing, um, again, you, the, the criteria they probably came up with is, is much longer than this, but I, again, keeping it simple, here's three. Cost, community need, and environmental impact. Okay, so these three criteria will really help differentiate one alternative to the next and hopefully allow us to decide which one is the best. Now, once you have this criteria, we have to also look at this and go, okay, well, one is, is maybe more important than the other, uh, and, and therefore we need to weight the criteria. So, again, this is where it gets a little bit complicated uh, because depending on who's making this, this, this decision, one person will weigh one differently than the other. Um, so this is where the human element comes into it. And again, this is what really makes economics a social science. It's not a science, right? It's a social science because humans are making these decisions. Humans weigh each alternative slightly differently. And therefore, one human will look at this list and differentiate uh, each of these a little bit, again, differently than the other. So if I'm looking at this list, if I'm the person in charge, if I'm weighing these, then cost is going to be the last for me. It's, it's, again, it's important. All these are important, but it's not the most important thing. Everything's going to cost a lot of money. So that I weighed that the last least. Okay. Environmental impact that was next, uh, important in terms of importance. So two out of the, uh, number two on the list. Again, I really strongly believe that if we can, uh, develop in an environmentally responsible and sustainable way long term that's going to do uh, service well um, as far as from an economic standpoint 
um, because it's not going to cost us down the road. It's not going to lead to further climate change impacts um, and things like that. Okay. And lastly, community need. So this is where uh, I think it's really, really important if you're going to develop a plot of land in a community, it's got to be needed by the community. It has to serve a purpose for the community. It has to be responsive to the community. So that's, I weighed that first. So community need number one, environmental impact number two, and cost is number three. So once you have this, now we can actually evaluate. So if you see here, we have our alternatives listed. This is, again, I love charts and, and things like that, simplifies things. And then we have our criteria along the top. What I did was I gave each a score out of 10. Okay, so going across the criteria, park and school, retail, corporate, and housing going down. So if we look at the first criteria, community need, Park and school, I gave that a 9 out of 10. I think that's the most needed. Then retail, there's lots of retail in Brampton. I don't think it's that big a deal. Corporate, again, corporate out here, it's not really needed uh, when it comes to, uh, the, again, what's who is uh, lives around the area and things like that. And then lastly, housing. Lots and lots of housing is already developed. So is that a, a further need? I'm not so sure. Okay. Next, we got environmental impact. Again, 8 out of 10 for park and school. There's still going to be an impact, but it's going to be much better than the other ones. Retail, 5. Corporate development, 5. And housing is 6, slightly more than retail corporate because you can do a lot of uh, good housing planning around the environment. Lastly, cost. It's going to mean, again, this is cost to the city to maintain it. Park and school is going to cost the most, therefore it's going to get the lowest score. Again, we think about cutting grass, maintaining the shelters, washing down the playground equipment, all those things are going to cost some money. Retail, you can offset those costs to the businesses. You still have to maintain probably you know, garbage and things like that, but it's not going to cost so much. Corporate, most of those uh, costs are offset to the corporate um, corporations that exist in these corporate um, places, and so that's going to have minimal costs. And lastly, housing, same idea. Uh, costs are going to be minimal. Street cleaning and, and things like that but again the taxpayers themselves who live there will be paying a lot of that so that's how I kind of evaluate it so if you look at this you get you know it, it's it's a little bit closer than you you may have thought um, and again this is all because of my decisions right so it's that social science piece again sticking its head out this is a human making the decisions but again it's close so this is where we go on to the waiting so, right so we we evaluate now in terms of weight. So community need, I said, was the number one thing, and therefore it gave it a weight of three versus two versus one. So that nine all of a sudden turns into 27, right? All the, all the values that we had in the community need uh, get a weighting of three, and therefore I multiply them by three. So all of a sudden nine is 27 versus six versus five versus four. And so now we see greater separation between these uh, different alternatives because of that weighting. Environmental impact, again, I said it was second, and therefore I gave a weighting of two. And again, eight turns into 16, five and 10, and six and a 12. And lastly, cost, a weighting of one, and therefore, um, again, four times one, and, and so on. And so now all of a sudden we see much greater separation, and that brings us to our results. Our possible alternatives after evaluation and use of the weights, we see park and school much further ahead than retail, corporate development, and then housing. And again, that's kind of where we end up. So we make that decision. We build the school, we build the parkland to the, the south of us, um, and that's our current situation, right? So we, we use the decision-making model to work through these, these choices and options. We really consider our, our needs, our wants, the scarce resources that exist, the different decisions that we need to be made in now in the future, and we make the decision. Once we make it, though, it's not over, and this is the last step. We have to assess the effectiveness. So this is where we are constantly going back and looking at this. Is the cost running higher than we expected? Is the community responding in a positive way? Is the land being used uh, in an environmentally responsible way? Is there things that we, don't, we didn't think of that all of a sudden rear its head? Um, so all these things we really need to assess and we constantly are doing this after we make a decision and making sure that we made the right choice. 
And once we, we've done all that, uh, then the decision making is over and only then. Um, and again, if we assess it and it's, it didn't work out, then we have to go back through the cycle again and, and probably revisit how we use that scarce resource. But again, I want to leave you with this idea um, is that every economist um, will go through this slightly differently and that's why we can you know, ask this, you know, the same question to 50 different economists and get 50 different answers because every single one of them is a different person and therefore they have different priorities, they weight things differently, um, and they evaluate it differently, okay? So just want to make sure that's clear. So with that understanding, right, consider again this, this challenge. Imagine Gene Augustine had, you know, let's say $100,000 to use. So scarce resource in terms of capital, they have a scarce amount of land um, at our disposal, but they have an economic decision to make. Do they build a new podcast studio? Do they put a football team together? Do they build a greenhouse for hospitality? Or do they purchase a class set of textbooks for every class? Build a new Mac lab? Provide tech for every student? Build a dome over the field? Or buy a team bus or, or something to that effect? Okay, so think about you know an economic decision Gene Augustine might make and work through the decision making model to see how you do, right? It, I even challenge you to go further. If you and a, someone else in the class um, choose the same thing, you know, go through the same uh, economic decision-making process with the same choice here, like let's say podcast you, and see how one, one of you compares to the other, and that's when you really see how you have the same decision to make but come up with maybe a different result. All right? That's it. Thanks.